my Accus have arrived, analog keyboard unit, as well as my analog rotary encoder board. So this is what I came up with today. And a neat little trick about this is this is, the code I used to generate this board is pretty much the same exact code that I used to generate the case and top plate for the Risky Board 70. Basically, I just changed some parameters and I was able to use it to generate this. Now, when I this is just a fitment test to make sure that I had everything sized correctly. And this was the first try. <laughs> uh, and it seems to be accurate. I mean, the screw holes line up right, and the, you know, you put the key switch over here, and there's plenty of room for that, so that should work just fine. And let me show you why, what the heck this weird thing is. You're like, what the hell? Why would you make a board like this? Well, it's going to be my little macro pad. And if you look at the size here, i got to get rid of that. Uh, look at that. That's the size. It fits right in there. And I was going to try and attach it with magnets, but they might not be strong enough, so I'll probably just use some double-sided tape like all the other products. Um, and I'll put a little lip on here. And actually, now that I've printed this, I'm thinking maybe I should just make a way to attach it to the, um, you know, the, the little bar thing that sits under here. Rather than print it as one unit, it might be better to just print a separate thing that holds this. We'll see. I mean, it's worth a try. It's just like a... It's just a little angle bar. It's only 10 minutes in OpenSCAD. But we'll see. So the, this is going to be a little macro pad. Uh, I thought, you know, I was going to do just one row of six. But then I was like, I got all this, you know, vertical space. I might as well use it, you know. So I'll put two on here. And a neat trick, too. So there's only five uh, Akus in a row when you get the board. It looks like, um, like this. One, two, three, four, five. You see that? But what I did here was because I know that I'm going to be, you know, coming down and then around for the for the LEDs, I actually cut out one of the one of the ends here that comes around like that. So it comes out the LED data signal comes out, down, and then back through. So I cut that right there. So that's exactly what it's going to do. So I don't have to run a wire from here to here. It's already wired inside. Kind of a neat little thing. So keep in mind if you make your own. But yeah, this was actually a lot easier to make than I thought. And now that I've got the screw holes lined up, I guess I should release the code that generates those screw holes in just the right places for you automatically. Um, it's going to be magnetically attached, which is what these little magnet holes are for, just like my um, Risky board and my numpad. So I can pop the top off and clean it if I want. And I still haven't figured out how I'm going to do the rotary encoder. I, I could do it just like I did with the um, with the big one over here, but I don't know. And I might have to give it more room just so I can get something in here to push this little button when you press it. But I think if I just make a little square pad that just gently sits on top here, you know, with a little um, you know, pin thing that sticks out, it should be able to press it if you press down on the knob. I don't know. It's something I got to think about. And another thing I got to think about is why the hell I used M3 screws. <laughs> <laughs> for this, but M2s for this. Why did I do that? I should have just used M2s for this. They're kind of big compared, you know, I mean, look at them, they're huge compared to the, the little M2s I got right here. And these M2s are actually too long. I, ordered, I just ordered some some shorter ones. You know, I've got every size of M3 imaginable, but I've only got like two sizes of M2s. <laughs> so hopefully I'll solve that problem very soon. So, for reference, when this is done, I'll be using little spacers here. Like, this is just hand-tightened. You don't want to do this because there's wires that run right near that screw, right? And you definitely want a washer, but you don't want a metal washer because, in theory, it could, you know, bridge. It can form a circuit between two parts that are there that you don't want to form a circuit with. Uh, you can kind of see the trace there. Yeah, so... What I'm going to do is I'm going to print out just a little circle. You know, I'm going to print out a plastic washer, basically. Um, but I'll probably make it oversized so that it catches on the wire. Or maybe I'll just make a diagonal square washer so that it can sit between these little these little pads and these pads. That way, as you rotate it, it'll get caught on the wires if there's any there. Anyway, it's just something, like, something I'm thinking about doing, keeping you up to date. 
Uh, but yeah, I think this is going to be great. And what's great, it was really cheap. <laughs> if you think about how much the cost of each Aku unit is, if I ordered a whole lot of them, this would be way cheaper than a store-bought macro pad. And you can make it, you know, I could, you could screw it on this way or this way. And you can make it whatever size you want, right? Whatever shape you want, too. Like, I could have a, give it a nice curve or whatever I wanted. That's the benefit of these uh, Aku units. You can make an analog keyboard in whatever size and shape you want. And in the next video, I think I'm going to go into how I'm going to wire it. In fact, while I'm waiting for those screws to arrive, what I'll probably do is do the needful <laughs> and solder some wires into every one of these little haul out um, signal pins. That's what that is. That goes to the Hall effect sensor. And you can see it's got a little um, sine wave. <laughs> that's what that's supposed to be, the little sine wave symbol. So yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to, before the next video, I'll solder all the wires that I'm going to need. I'm going to need wires that come out of every single one of these pins, and I'm going to need to run the uh, out from here to the in on here. Maybe i got to flip these around. I might have put them on wrong. Yeah, I think I did. Because it should be, well, no, it should be, I guess I've got it, I'm reading it backwards. So it goes in through this way. So it'll come out here, in here. So I need to run a wire from here to here, and that goes for the five volt and the ground too. I gotta connect them. And then I gotta do the same thing down here. And just for good measure, I should probably run wires between uh, ground and signal in the middle here, just to make sure that the power gets distributed nice and evenly and that there's no voltage loss uh, to the analog Hall effect sensors, because we don't really care about the LEDs. The amount that they would dim from that loss is so little, no one would notice. But you can really affect impact your um, Hall effect sensor signals to have voltage loss down a long line like this. I mean, it's not that long, but the LEDs themselves are super power hungry, so they'll gobble it up. The capacitors that I put on here aren't that big. Anyways, that's all. That's what I'm working on. It's gonna. It actually isn't gonna be much more effort. It's just gonna be a lot of printing. And actually a lot of thinking about what I want to do. <laughs> That's all for now.